Now, as a professor over 12 years, I reckon I've marked nearly 10,000 assignments, and I can honestly say that critical analysis is just the most important academic skill to affect your grade. Your problem is it's just never explained to students clear enough. So in today's video, I'm going to end this confusion, and I'm going to present some simple explanations so you can master this academic skill that I believe is the surest way for you to do well in your assignments. So let's unpick this term critical analysis. Now, one of the issues for students, and indeed for markers, is that critical analysis becomes a little bit of a catch-all term. And when people are marking, really what they're looking for is a whole host of different actions that the student might be doing in the paragraph. And we could insert critical before all of these different terms. So really what the, the marker and what generally the marking criteria are looking for is a higher order skill, which is more than merely describing. And therefore what we see, what we're looking for is a term that I have relational action between things. You're not just presenting something, but you're showing some tension, some dialogue, some relationship between two different theories, two different sources, or two reference points. Now let's further try and understand this then, relational action. We've drawn a distinction between description and being critical. We can think about being descriptive in an assignment as being passive, meaning you're, there's no contention, there's no action. You're merely presenting, describing, or giving an overview of the topic that you're having dialogue with. It's a much simpler way of communicating and it's easier to do. Very often, this is why students end up doing description because once you start in the process of writing, it's just the easiest thing to do. You're literally just placing one word after another and it can immediately appear from the thought of your mind because there's no real work or action that you're inserting into the description. It's all very self-evident what the sentences should be doing to describe something. So if we think about this in terms of an assignment, if you're merely being descriptive, you'd just be almost listing a set of ideas. And it might be referenced, so you might have four references on the page, but there's no actual conversation. There's no dialogue, there's no tension, connection, development between the different points that you're talking about. You're merely presenting these points. So description then is very different to being critical. Being critical rather than passive, the marker is looking for you to be active. There's a doing of something between X and Y, between two different sources or two different references or two different theories that you're using. Very often in marking criteria, which people use to guide their marking and how they award the mark, a key term that we might have is use of sources. So in terms of use, the marker wants to see some level of engagement, some activity, some linking and connecting between these sources to, to show that there's academic labor and work and intelligence going into it. And of course, it becomes very easy then to, when we check over our work to think about Am I actually using the sources? What am I doing with them? Am I just listing them, presenting them? Or is there a use? Is there a doing, an action, uh, a connecting between them? And what we would see then if we move over to maybe the representation of a page here, as your maybe four sources here, you'd be developing, progressing, connecting. So what have they got to say together? Are they having a conversation? Is there an antagonism? What are the relationships between these sources on the page and the argument that you're creating? And ultimately, this is how a higher mark is decided because if you're able to show what I call a bit of academic magic, if you're able to show the connection to be a little bit more nuanced, more sophisticated, more highly attuned to what you're building up in a progressive way here to build an argument across the page. And this is really important because it's not just about being critical across a paragraph of a page, it's also then importantly to be progressive. You're developing the meaning of the paragraph, what it's about, through a form of argumentation. So you're building, you're tinkering, you're finding these relationships in the sources to ultimately build a position. And that's also how you're using the sources. We'll look more closely at this term academic magic in part three. We'll get to the heart of it, how you transition into those really top marks by displaying high levels of academic skill. I now want us to turn to marking criteria so we can see what the marker is examining and how they award higher marks through certain levels of critical analysis that they're able to see in your work. 
Now, every university you're at and every department you're in will have its own marking criteria, and it's there to give markers a guide to how they award different levels of mark for the assignment, and also importantly, a framework for the students to look at, so they're also able to see what they have to aim for, what they have to do to get into the upper echelons of a mark being awarded. So the key is to become familiar with the marking criteria of your department and the specifics of different things that they're after and that they're looking for. These are some of the things that I've snipped out in the plus 70 regions of awarding marks. So this shows us to get a mark above 70 that they're wanting us to demonstrate lots of different things. It's all very good to have a criteria like this, but there just seems to be a whole host of different terms in the requirements of what they're wanting us to demonstrate. So it can get very confusing. Very often, I don't think markers are making this distinction between, oh, this is analysis, this is discussion, this is critical reflection, this is evaluation. Really what they're wanting to see is something more than mere description. They're wanting to see this relational activity between sources. So showing contestation, showing difference, showing connection, showing extension, show how they're having a conversation with each other and how you can build an argument and a picture throughout making these connections across a paragraph and an assignment. 